just to emphasize where the sources of variation are, um, the sources of variation in meiosis are um, obviously mutation, and the mutation comes from interphase. Um, because of the semi-conservative DNA, there are mistakes in the copying, and any mistakes there are obviously going to be passed on and going to be in the, the, um, the chromosomes. The next source of variation is independent assortment. Um, and this is because of each of the pair of chromosomes that you possess, you put one of each pair into the gametes. Now you've got some 23 pairs. So you've got 22 um, autosomes these are the non-sex and one of those chromosomes and then you've got um, either an X and an X chromosome for a girl or an X and a Y chromosome if you're a boy. Now of those choices you've got you could put one of each pair of the chromosome 1, one of each pair of the chromosome 2, one of each pair of the chromosome 3, one of each pair of the chromosome 4, one of each pair of the chromosome 5 and so on. So this gives you 2 to the power of 23. So that's 2 multiplied by 23. And this gives you some 8 million different variants just from um, independent assortment. When you add to that this concept of crossing over, now, if you imagine you've got a chromosome and on it are the genes, like so. Now, on the other chromosome, the other part of the homologous chromosome, which we'll do in blue, this will have the same genes, but may have different alleles, or the same alleles, of those genes. Now, in semi-conservative replication, they're going to replicate and you're going to have exactly the same alleles because it's been semi-conservatively replicated. Now, they're going to then line up in um, homologous pairs in prophase 1. And what's going to happen here is you get chiasma. And the chiasma can occur at any point between the non-sister chromatids. So it can occur between here and here, or here and here. And the chiasma can, can occur anywhere along them. So what you're going to end up with is you're going to get a crossing over where this breaks and joins here, and this one breaks and joins on here. So now, when they get pulled apart, you'll have one that's exactly the same as it was before and that will be going into one of the gates one which is going to have a chunk of this one which is going to have and one which is going to be exactly like so. <coughs> so this is what was in um, the, s the starting cell, and this is what was in the starting chromosome. But these two are the result of crossing over. So they don't contain any new genes, but what they do contain is the new combinations of alleles. Because now this has got, a, has got alleles here, so this is now a hybrid of the maternal and the paternal chromosomes. It can change a chunk of one of the chromosome ones from one parent and a chunk of the chromosome ones from the other parent. Okay, the next form is 
independent is random assortment of chromatids in metaphase two. So in metaphase two, the order in which they line up and the way up they are will give you variation when those are then pulled apart. So, random sorry, independent assortment of chromosomes in metaphase one, random assortment of chromatids in metaphase two. So those are the source of variation, the four sources of variation in meiosis, which is mutation, crossing over, independent assortment of chromosomes in metaphase one, random assortment of chromosomes, of chromosomes chromatids in metaphase two. You can add to that the source of variation in um, sexual reproduction, which is random fertilization of the gametes, um, and sorry, random fusion of the gametes and random fertilization. Um, in the, you know, of all the many gametes, anyway, I'll stop that there. Um, so that's all of the sources of variation. 